So thankful this morning for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what. I wouldn't stay around too long where it was dead and dry and cold as last year's bird's nest. Might rub off on you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I've been in services. My, my, my dinner in the Baptist deacon. Hallelujah. You look for the coffin. Amen. You thought somebody done passed away. Hallelujah. But I don't like that. I believe where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. The Bible says, whithersoever the river floweth, there is life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If we've got Him flowing in our life, we will have that resurrection life. Amen? Hallelujah. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this morning's sermon, if you're putting the title down, you can title it, Lord, teach us to pray. Hallelujah. A couple of weeks ago, and you can turn there if you want to. I'm only going to spend about five minutes on this. Of course, that's in preacher time. Amen? You know, the Bible says that a day is a thousand years, a thousand years a day with the Lord. Well, those preachers run on a different time clock too. We say we ain't going to hold you too long. Well, we ain't in our mind. Amen? Hallelujah. When we're closing, we're actually closing. Of course, it might be two or three more closings before we get done. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. We talked about the showdown on the top of Mount Carmel. Amen? Hallelujah. Where Elijah said, get all the prophets of Baal up here. We need some preachers like that today, Brother Jim. Amen? Amen? That are not just you're okay, I'm okay, your God's okay, I got my God, you got your God, we'll all show up in the same place later. But we need some people to say, hey, and we need, to, we need some preachers to tell it to the church. If you're going to serve God, serve God. Amen. If you're going to serve the world, serve the world. But choose you this day who you're going to serve. Amen? Amen. Amen? So he called the prophets of Baal up there on Mount Carmel and he said, you cry out to your God, I'll cry out to mine. Amen? And the one that supplies the fire will prove himself to be God. And we all know what happened. Amen? Amen. The crazy, fanatical Baal worshipers got up there and they called on Baal and they made their smoke signals and they screamed out and they hollered and, and, and when they didn't show up, they took and they carved on themselves and they bled. Amen? And they screamed the louder, but still their God was silent. And Elijah said, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's on a journey. Maybe he's busy. Aren't you glad God don't get busy? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's big enough for every need you have. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. That means he's right where you're at when you need him and you need him all the time. Amen. 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 Said, so call a little louder. So they did, and nothing happened. Finally, Elijah said, Step aside, boys. He repaired the altar. Oh, there's a message in that this morning. Amen. We may have preached on that sometime soon. He repaired the altar. The church needs to repair the altar this morning. Amen? Amen. The Bible says his house is supposed to be called a house of prayer. Hallelujah. That don't just mean the opening prayer and the closing prayer. That means the people that will seek his Amen. face. Amen? Amen? That'll cry on the altar. That'll stain the altar with tears. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My, my, my. And call out for God to move on behalf of his people. So Elijah repairs the altar and he says, puts that sacrifice on there and the wood on there and you know how it goes. Go get me some water and pour it on there. Don't give a little trench around it. Long story short, they poured, I don't know, seven times or something. How many times they poured barrels of water on there? And he knelt down and he prayed and God sent the fire. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent the fire. The God of the world could not send the fire. The God of the world cannot deliver you today. The God of the world cannot save you today. Only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen? Only the great I Am. Only the God that was there in the beginning and said, let there be light, and there was light. There's only salvation to be found in Him. So He sends the fire, and the people, of course, when they see the miracle, and they see the fire, they holler, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. You want to draw a crowd, just go out here this morning and tell them somebody's crooked leg got straight. Amen? We'll have them all in here next Sunday, the blind, the impotent, the, the lamed, the... Amen? Because people look for a sign or they look for something that God can give to them. 
And then he takes all the prophets of Baal, all Jezebel's prophets, and he slays them with a sword. Then he tells Ahab, he says, now see, remember, they're in the middle of a terrible drought. They're about to the end of it. He tells Ahab, you better get up and you better go because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain even though there's not a cloud in the sky. Not a cloud in the sky, but he can hear the rain coming. Amen. Why? We covered this. Because he believed in his God. Amen. By faith you can see your family being saved. Why? Because you believe in your God. Amen. And because you ain't going to stop praying till you see something happen. Amen. Well, I've been praying for my husband for a long time. That's okay. Keep praying. I've been praying for my wife for a long time. That's okay. Just keep praying. Amen? Pray until something happens. You remember Brother Bill the night that he preached to well, a lot of you, don't you? Wasn't here, but those few of us here this morning that were here had a sign up here on the pulpit that said P-U-S-H, push. Pray until something happens. Amen? Glory to God. Keep praying. Till the answer comes, I'm going to keep praying. Amen. Until somebody opens the door, I want to keep knocking. Till I find something, I want to keep seeking. So what do we find Elijah doing? He says, the sound of an abundance of rain, I can hear it coming. Let me find out what we're getting. Ah, verse 41, 1 Kings 18. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. Ain't seen none yet, but there is a sound. I can hear it coming. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may not see the answer yet. But you can hear it with your spiritual ear if you believe that God is going to move on your situation. And you know He is because He's promised you in His Word. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and he cast himself down on the ground, onto the earth, I'm sorry, and put his face between his knees. Wonder what he's doing. We know what he's doing because the Bible tells us what he's doing in the book of James. He's praying. Amen. So he tells his servant, you go up and see if you see the rain coming. You know, sometimes you can see it. If you're in a high enough place and you're looking out across the plain or the field, you can look and say, ooh, that's rain. And it's headed this way. So his servant goes up there, Sister Patty, while Elijah's down there with his head between his knees. And I'd give y'all a demonstration, but y'all have to call 911 or the jaws of life or something to unhook me. Anyway, and he said, go up there and look and see if you see... The rain coming. And his servant comes back and says, I don't see nothing. <laughs> so Elijah says, okay, forget it. I'm going to eat lunch. No. He says, go again. Comes back and says, I ain't seen nothing. He says, go again. The whole time Elijah's praying. Honey, you may not see the answer to your brother. I could preach this morning. You may not see the answer to your prayer. Hallelujah. But keep praying anyway. He didn't quit praying. He said him seven times. The Bible says on the seventh time. <laughs> Glory to God. He came back running and said, Master. That's what they called their, 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 their overseer or whatever. He was his, he was his servant. And he, he said, hey, there's a cloud coming up out of the sea about the size of a man's hand. It don't look like much now, but by the time it gets here, it's going to be an abundant gully washer. Amen. It's going to be raining cats and dogs uh, before the day is through. Why? Because Elijah, down on his knees, down with his, his face to the ground, crying, Lord, send the rain. Lord, open up the heavens. Hallelujah. Even though he didn't see nothing the first time. Even though he didn't see nothing the second time. And the third and the fourth. Hallelujah. It came to pass on the seventh time, verse 44. It came to pass on the seventh time. Oh, somebody said it came to pass on the seventh time. His servant said, Behold, there rises the little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. There was a great rain. There was a great rain. Oh, I said there was a great rain. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. How many ready for a great rain? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, to get it, we better have Benny Hinn in here. You better not have Benny Hinn anywhere. But to get it, we better have big name preacher in here. 
No, to get it, we better do like Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, if they will seek my face and pray, if they will turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I pour it out and heal their land. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. That's what Elijah was doing. And that's the reason the rain came. He was praying. Amen. You may be praying for your healing and you ain't seen nothing yet. What do you advise, preacher? Keep praying. You may be praying for your kids to get saved. And it seems like every report you get from them, they're just getting further and further away from getting saved instead of getting closer. What's your advice, preacher? Keep praying. Amen. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Amen. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9, you can write this down. I'm going to hit it real quick and then go to our text for today. Galatians 6 and 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We're going to learn something today about prayer that most of the church doesn't understand. Matter of fact, many preachers don't. I've heard preachers say that if you pray more than one time and ask God for something more than once, it is a lack of faith. And I've told you this before that makes me scratch my head and wonder if they've ever read what the Bible teaches about prayer. Because the Bible is very plain. There is one central theme to prayer when you read and you study about what the Bible teaches us on prayer. It's not pretty prayers. How I many glad of that? I've been around some preachers and they could pray some pretty prayers. They would ask them to pray over the food and I thought they never would get done. Amen. O oh God, Thou who has drawn out the streams on the mountaintops with Thy holy finger, and then on and on. It was pretty. Oh, it was pretty. I can't pray that like that. Amen. But the Bible didn't teach us that there's power in pretty prayers. Now, I'm not knocking their prayer. Might be, might be some power in that. I just can't do it. Amen. I'm more of a blessed and meat, let's eat preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. No, I'm praying a little bit longer than that, but... The central point that the Bible drives home about prayer and how the world preachers miss this, I don't know. I know how the ones at the pew miss it because the preacher in the pulpits missed it and he's taught them wrong. But the central point of prayer is not pretty prayers. Persistent prayers. Amen. When they came to Jesus, and let's look at our text for today. Luke 11 and 5. I can't think of a better source to go to today Whenever we're learning about prayer, whenever we're teaching on prayer, amen. When we want to know, know when we want to know more about prayer, Luke the eleventh chapter. Let me switch over real quick. I wasn't going to start at uh, verse one. Hallelujah! But you all look pretty content and not in a hurry. Luke eleven and one. This morning, hallelujah. Let's see. The disciples come to Jesus in Luke the 11th chapter. The first verse. You got it? Say amen. 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 And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, Jesus was a man of prayer. Yeah. Amen. A lot of times you'll find where he went off by himself to pray. Do us some good to do that. Amen. amen. Do us some good to do that. Now you may not, if you're like my house, you ain't got no closet that ain't full of junk, so you can't have a prayer closet, as it were, a closet, amen? Yeah. You do well. You do well to grab you something, get out the way just in case something falls out. Hallelujah. Amen. So you ain't no way you getting in there to pray, but your prayer closet can be anywhere. You're sitting in mine. Mm -hmm. This is where I come to every day to spend some time with the Lord and to pray. Amen. Yeah. It can be your it can be a prayer closet if you have one. I did have one once before and loved it. But it can be a prayer closet, an actual closet, or it can be your car. It can be your bedroom. Just somewhere to get alone with God and spend some time in prayer. Amen? And take some advice from me. Turn your cell phone off because if you don't, you ain't going to get no praying done. Amen. The devil knows exactly when you're praying and exactly when to have people call you and text you. Amen? So turn it off. But what if somebody needs something? They can wait surely for a few minutes while you get along with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Used to. We came to 
church and we didn't know if anybody called until we got back to the house. That's when we had an answering machine or a, or a what was it, caller IDs. Before that, we didn't even know that. Somebody could say, I've been trying to call you all day and you could be like, well, I ain't been home. But now we got it in our pocket. And all of us have it within arm's reach. But if we don't get any prayer done, we better put it a little farther out than arm's reach. Amen. Or turn it down or vibrate or something. Amen. But anyway, it would behoove us all this morning to have us a place to go. Set aside to pray. Like I said, even if it's your car. Somewhere. To spend some time alone with the Lord. Amen. That's old fashioned, Brother Jim. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that talk. You don't hear that preached. I guarantee you if you turn on most of the stations this morning, I'm not including SBN, but I'm talking about most of the other stations that are supposed to be Christian, you won't hear much of that, if any of that. An encouragement to get alone and pray and to seek the face of God. When it hurts you, take your Bible with you. Amen. When you go into your prayer closet or your special place to pray, you don't know when the Lord might want to speak to you through His Word. So find you a place. Make you a place. If you don't have one, make you one. Get along with the Lord. Amen. Spend some time with Jesus. Listen to this. It came to pass that he was praying in a certain place. And when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John the Baptist also taught his disciples. Amen. And then he says, and he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven. Now, this part that I was going to skip over, but we'll share it this morning which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, now don't forget, what's he teaching them? What did they ask him? To teach them to pray. Listen what he tells them next. And he said unto them, verse 5, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Sort of reminds me of the little woman that I sung the song about this morning. Amen. The first answer was, no, you know, that, that uh, Jesus said that I can't give the children's bread to the dogs. And, and here this man says, well, I can't get up. And this man that's knocking on his door that needs help, does the Bible say after he told him the door is now shut, my children are in bed with me, I cannot rise and give to you? Well, he just went on back home without anything in his hand and he didn't get the answer that he was looking for because he was turned away or because it didn't happen right away. Amen? That's the main point of this. Because it didn't happen right away, he said, well, shucks, forget it. I'm going back to the house. I ain't going to mess with this. That's not what the Bible says. Amen? And remember, Jesus is teaching on prayer here. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, listen to me, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Now, importunity is a big word for us folks here in Kentucky. Amen? Let me tell you what that means. It means persistence. It means persistence to the point of annoyance. Here's an example. You urged me with your untiring importunity. Not because he was his friend, not because it was convenient for him, but because after he told him, go away, I'm in bed, I can't get up. He's left now. What in the world? I told him to go. I can't get up. I'm in the bed. Go home. He kept asking. What is Jesus teaching? He's teaching them how, glory to God, how to pray. Amen? And it says He won't do it because He's His friend, but because of His persistence. Because He's getting on my nerves. <laughs> now, we don't get on God's nerves, but the central point of, this, of, this, of what Jesus is teaching them is that when you knock one time and there's no answer,
answer. Don't turn away from the door. Amen. Just knock again until he lets you in. Sometimes it only takes once more. Because of his importunity. Amen. Because of his faithful and his persistent prayer. Listen, if you get tired of us praying over the prayer box every time we come to service, get used to it. If you're going to stick around, Amen. this morning ain't the first or the last time you're going to see us do that. Amen. If you get tired of mama standing up back there in the corner and saying, pray for my grandkids, get used to it. Amen. And you get tired of hearing us make the same prayer request every Sunday morning for our family to be saved. Get used to it. Amen. Because we ain't going to quit until we see them saved. We ain't going to quit until the door opens. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I said glory to God. Get used to it. Because we're going to be persistent in our prayers. Amen. That's what Jesus is teaching them. He's teaching them how to pray. Listen up, preacher. He's teaching His children, His disciples, how to pray. And He's telling them to be persistent in their prayers. Just because the answer didn't come the first time. Just because the answer didn't come the second time. We don't know how long this man was standing there beating. you got to have something. Reminds me of Jacob when he wrestled with the Lord. And the Lord said, let me go. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. We need to get a bulldog grip on the altar and say, I will not quit praying till my family's saved. I will not quit praying till my husband's saved. Glory to God. I'm going to be persistent. May not be pretty. Sometimes all I can do is sling a little snot. Amen. I don't even know what to pray. I can't tell you the many times that I've stumbled and staggered and got a, and, 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 uh, uh, stuttered and got a prayer out and thought, man, that sounded pitiful. And finally I just said, Lord, I don't even know how to pray. But I know this. And this was Jesus' main point when he prayed. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I may not know how to pray, but he can understand. Amen. He can understand it when I don't know how to pray. My, my, my. Listen to what it says, verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The very example that he's showing us with this man and his importunity lets us know, besides the fact that there's evidence in the Greek and the way the Greek language works, that this doesn't mean just knock one time, but it means to knock, it means to ask and keep on asking. It means to seek and keep on seeking. It means to knock and keep on knocking. Amen. Hallelujah. It means to keep on praying. Hallelujah. Going to keep on praying. Amen. Until I hear from heaven. I'm going to stay on my knees. Amen. I'll just keep calling on you, Lord, until you hear my plea. It doesn't matter if no one else sees, but until I hear from heaven, I'm going to stay on my knees. Oh, isn't that good this morning? Look at what your neighbor says. Good. Hallelujah. This is what it says. Verse 10. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And everyone that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Hallelujah. If a son shall ask for bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he, give him a, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? What's He doing? He's teaching them how to pray. Amen. Look and keep on looking. Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking. Amen. Remember what we read? That let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. If we faint not, turn with me to Luke 18 and 1. Jesus teaching them how to pray again. 
Another perfect example of what we're talking about this morning. And we've preached on this and we've preached on this and we'll probably preach on this and preach on this some more before we get out of here. Luke 18 and 1. We find another example that Jesus gives when it comes to prayer. I hope you're out there and hearing this this morning. If a preacher has told you there's no sense praying anymore because you've already prayed once and it's a lack of faith if you pray again. My, 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 I've told you this before and I'll tell you this this morning. It takes more faith to pray the second time after you ain't seen nothing the first time. Amen? Oh, can I say that again? Thank you. I knew you'd let me. I said it takes more prayer to pray the, it takes more faith to pray the second time than it does the first time after you hadn't seen nothing the first time. Amen? It takes more faith to pray the third time than it did the second or the first once you ain't seen nothing the second or the first time. Amen. The more, ta the longer the time it takes, the more faith it takes you to get down and to seek God and say, Lord, I ain't going to let you go till you save my children. I ain't going to let you go till you save my husband. I ain't going to let you go till you heal my body. Amen. Hallelujah. It takes more faith for you to keep on praying even though the door's still shut. To keep on praying even though nobody's answered. To keep on praying even though you won't have the answer that you've been seeking for. It takes more faith to continue to pray, not less. Amen? It takes more faith because you ain't seen nothing yet, but you're still praying. Your family just keeps getting meaner, but you're still praying. Your husband just keeps getting on your ear, but you're still praying. Your wife just keeps getting meaner, but you're still praying. Amen. Till the answer comes, I'm going to keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Luke 18 and 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. You know what that means? That means this is the point of the parable. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. So he said, he, the word of God said, he spoke a parable to them concerning this. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now here's the parable. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. What's he teaching on church? Prayer. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. Now we don't know how long that while was. But we do know that during that while, she saw no sign of anything. She got no answer. She did not get the answer she wanted anyway. He might have said no. He might have said go away. He might have said quit bugging me. But whatever the case, however long it took, she didn't get the answer she wanted. That she desperately needed. Amen? She didn't get the answer that she so desperately needed. And he would not for a while we don't know how long that was, but in the meantime, what's she doing, church? She's still praying. She's still asking. Probably even had some people, and I'm speculating here, just because I know human nature. Some of her friends probably said, you're going back over there today? You know that he don't fear God. He doesn't have any regard for anyone. You're going back over there today. Some people may look at you like that. You mean you're still praying for that husband of yours? You're still praying for them kids of yours? You're still believing God for what you need? Oh yeah, you better believe it. So they said, you still going over there to that house and trying to get that judge or going before that judge and trying to get him? Yes, I sure am. Amen. He would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, I'm in verse 5, Luke 18, yet because this widow woman submitted such a pretty petition, I didn't want to say that. Because this widow woman submitted such an intelligent sounding plea. Amen? I mean, glad you don't have to have an education to know how to pray. Amen? Amen? Matter of fact, I think education sometimes gets in the way of knowing how to pray. He said, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. No answer in sight. Been turned down. Still coming. And I can see her every day. Bless her heart. He done turned her away. 
He done told her, get out of here. No, there ain't no way. I'm not doing this. The situation looked completely hopeless. And every day, Mom would get up. And she'd make her way to the unjust judge. And make her plea. That's if she left. I don't even know that she left. She might have been like Rizpah out there when she was keeping the, the, the beast off the bones of her kids that were hanging in the tree to get David's attention. She was trying to get David's attention. Amen. She might, this woman might have sat out there cold, hot, rain, waiting for the unjust judge to give her, to supply her with the answer that she so desperately needed. Amen. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God will regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she worry me, she's bugging the snot out of me. That's what we say in Kentucky. Amen. She's bugging me. She won't quit asking. <laughs> yet because of the widow's continual coming, I will answer her and the Lord said hear what the unjust judge said getting ready to close and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth I wish I could teach this morning the way this needs to be taught. Did you hear what he just asked? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Now what has he been teaching about? He's been teaching, teaching about prayer. And what has been his focal point? Persistent <coughs> prayer. The fact that he asked the question at the end of the parable, will I find faith? He's saying, will I find that kind of faith? The kind of faith that doesn't just pray once and give up? The kind of faith that regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the obstacles, regardless of how long it takes, will I find the kind of faith that will continue to seek, will continue to ask, will continue to knock? Is that the kind? Will I find that faith? It takes great faith to do that, church. It takes great faith to do that. When you hurt every day, when your feet hit the floor, and you spent sleepless night after sleepless night, it takes great faith for you to still believe and to pray that God is going to heal your body. Amen? Amen. Amen. It takes great faith. He said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith? This kind of faith like this widow woman had, this kind of faith like this man had that came to his friend at midnight and kept knocking and kept asking, hey, i got to have something, i got to have something. Will he find that kind of faith? Turn with me in closing this morning to Matthew 20 and 30. Matthew 20 and 30. Let's throw this in here at the end. I don't think I've been preaching in about 10 minutes. I told you I don't go on that kind of time. Matthew 20 and 30. Oh, this is good right here. Matthew 20 and 30. Let me know when you got it. Say amen. amen. Matthew 20 and 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, Have mercy on me. Oh, excuse me. Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. Let's stop there for a minute. Two blind guys sitting by the wayside, begging, no doubt. Here Jesus is coming. Son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd turns to him. And instead of saying, hey, take these guys to Jesus. I've seen him heal the blind. I've seen him open deaf ears. They said, shh, be quiet. And the blind guys, what they do? Did they say, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Didn't mean to interrupt. That's not what the Bible says, is it? The multitude said, Hold their peace for them to hold their peace, but they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. <laughs> Shh. The devil's probably told you that. Shh. He ain't gonna answer you. You've prayed, nothing happened. You've prayed and nothing happened. I know the devil's told you that. He's told me that. You've prayed and nothing happened. 
Sadly, many times Christians would be like, you know, you're right, I give up. But these two blind men, when the religious crowd turned to them and said, shh, hold your peace. They said, excuse me. Thou son of David, have mercy on us. They cried the louder. Amen. Oh, that's good this morning. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Now what would have happened had they have listened to the crowd and just said, okay, I'm sorry, I won't say anything else. They'd have died blind more than likely. They'd have died blind more than likely. Amen. Don't let the devil convince you to stop knocking. Amen. Don't let the devil convince you to stop seeking. Don't let the devil convince you to stop asking just because you ain't seen it. Hallelujah. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is more than enough to save your kids. He is more than enough to save your husband. He is more than enough to save your wife. He is more than enough to heal your body. He is more than enough to pour out His Spirit, amen, upon your children, upon His church, upon to have a last day revival if we'll see him, if we'll pray, if we'll seek His face, if we'll continue to bombard the throne room of heaven with our prayers for the salvation of our children, He is more than enough. Amen. But I don't know how to pray. Sure you do. Just start crying out. These men sitting by the wayside were not religious men. They didn't know any pretty words. The only thing they needed to do was cry out, Thou Son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. If you can't get nothing else out of your pie hole, get on your knees and say, Lord, have mercy on my family. Amen. Have mercy on my children. Have mercy on my spouse. Have mercy. Amen. The pretty, one of the prettiest prayers in all of the Word of God is when Peter was about to drink a lot of water and go down for the last time. Said, Lord, save me. That's all you got to do. And keep praying. Amen. Amen. Keep praying. I thought this week about, as I was studying on prayer, I thought about the story that Brother Bobby Grove tells on one of his records about a soldier man that had been overseas fighting and he came home because his dear little mama had passed away and he came from home from the service for the funeral and after the service was over, and Brother Billy, I've heard this before. Well, shh, I don't know, tell it anyway. Hallelujah. And he was standing out on the front porch and the preacher was there and everyone else was gone. The preacher said, Son, <clears throat> many a times I've walked down this old dirt road and I could hear your mama up there in the hills praying and calling out your name to God. He said every time that... She told me one time that every time she prayed for you, she'd take a little rock and she'd set it to the side of a little homemade altar that she had made. Don't tell how many times this little old woman had prayed for her son. Maybe some of her neighbors thought, what's that noise? <laughs> that crazy old woman praying for her son. Oh, why she don't stop? So anyway, after everybody left, after the preacher was gone, the, the soldier thought, well, I think I might walk up there where Mama used to pray. Found a little path that had been worn out by her little feet. He walked up there and as he rounded one of the bends there on the top of the mountain, there was a clearing there in the middle of the path and there was a little altar that Mama had made. There was a stack of stones about head high next to that altar at the times that she had prayed for him and there was two little indentions in the earth where Mama's knees had knelt so many times. And the Holy Spirit, this is what I mean by your prayers never die, that God honors them after you're gone. The Holy Spirit gripped the heart of that soldier and he knelt down putting his knees in those little indentions where Mama's knees had knelt and laid his head on that altar and accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. Wow. Don't stop praying. Hallelujah. Don't stop praying. Amen. Don't stop praying. Keep praying for your babies. Even after you're already gone home to be with Jesus, it might be your prayers that have came up as a memorial before the Lord as Cornelius has had. That God says, I, I remember the prayers of Mama. 
I'm going to save them before it's too late. Let the Holy Spirit deal with their heart. Amen. And beckon them one more time because of your prayers. Amen. Don't stop praying for your babies. Don't stop praying for your friends, your neighbors, your husband, your wife. The main thing that we learn in this is don't stop praying. That's a lot of scriptures and a lot of preaching to bring you to one point. Don't stop praying. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And if we're not weary in well-doing, we will reap in due season if we faint not. Keep praying, church. Keep praying. Someone else this morning have something before we go.